another example. This is an example from the uh, Sutovsky's game, well-known Grandmaster, and um, different side castles. Both sides try to attack, but okay, mainly Black tries to have some control over the D file. So how Sutovsky continues here to create pressure? He plays B5. First of all, Sutovsky avoids any kind of this taking uh, complications, pressures, tension, and now after b5, as there is a fianchetto structure, he plans to push a4, a5, and attack here. Okay, if he would play immediately a4, of course there is a problem because pawn b4 would be hanging. So rook d8, a4 with very simple plan for white. Actually, we have to mention that this knight is just perfectly placed on c4. Knight e5, rook d8. Black tries to exchange as more pieces as possible to limit attacking potential of white. And this is the move that I would like to show and talk about a little bit. Uh, I think in our previous lessons we already mentioned this matter of far away advanced pawn. So again we see this case. Uh, this is a, potentially this is a past pawn because if something happens, and for example I will be able to exchange those bishops, th there is always a tactical strike of knight takes b6, pawn takes and a7, a8. That should be uh, sh should 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 worry my opponent all the time. So or king has to stay there to avoid the tactical strike or queen or something. So in truth, I did not fix and close the structure. In truth, I created potentially past pawn, very far away advanced pawn a6. This is another purpose of the corner pawn attack, not always uh, destroying like opening here the file. So rook takes, king takes and king d1 check, as white created also al already on the queen side enough advantage and pressure. Now he plans to go to the king side. Ok, king e7 also was possible but uh, it doesn't change the case too much of the game. Queen h5 2 con c3, 2 con h7, and now potentially white will have another pass pawn here very soon. Queen d8, check, check, queen f4. Uh, a stronger continuation was just the queen h5 with idea to play e5, and black, black bishop has some problems. Maybe bishop d4, but now e5, because I really need to exchange this white square bishops in order to create uh, knight b6 sacrifice threats. Okay, also I will need to exchange the queens too. For example, now after bishop takes g2, I'm giving this intermediate check, exchanging queens, now take here and game is simply lost because there are this kind of threats and simply h-pawn advancing ideas. But anyway, I want to follow to the Sutovsky's game because uh, what he did in this game is also uh, very familiar to our uh, subject. So check bishop f1, e5, take queen f26. So black tries to exchange as more pieces as possible, and now knight takes b6. Also, it was possible first to exchange this bishop and then knight takes b6. It makes no difference. So knight takes b6 and now we see that after pawn takes b6, bishop g2, we are exchanging to white square bishops and this pawn will go to the queen. So that's another typical purpose of the corner pawn attack, creating potentially passed pawn. Another example, Kramnik against Nikolic and I think you already understood how white continued here. Just the same style as Sutovsky did. Okay, I don't want to play yet a4 because there's a tension here. Black could exchange at least those pawns, then get access for the knight to the beautiful c5 square. 
So first, uh, Kramnik is fixing here the pawn chain, and now a4, a5 will come here. Knight h7, a4, f6. I think slightly better it was to play knight g5. Um, Nikolic decided to create a blocking structure against this bishop, but matter is that now Kramnik simply exchanged these queens and it's a one side game here. Maybe knight g5 and knight h3 check would give some hope for the court play to the black player. Without queens, there is no anything. Rook b8, Kramnik decided to exchange the queens. This beautiful knight protecting the pawn b5, and finally, okay, this time Kramnik did not create this faraway advanced pass pawn because uh, more benefits he's getting if he will exchange and enter on a7. So this could be another idea and purpose of the uh, cornered pawn attack, just simply opening the file to get access on the 7th rank. So now, rook e7 was played in the game. In some books it was recommended to play uh, knight e6, but even after knight e6, knight d6, knight f5, white is just simply not dominating. So, rook e7, uh, f4, pawn takes, pawn takes. Together with this queenside domination, white also got beautiful and flexible pawn chain and potentially open position for the pair of bishops. King f8, and we could finish here, of course, this exercise because White got 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 almost winning position. But um, our previous video lesson, what about was about the peace coordination and peace maneuvering to improve their position every time, and this is also a very very good example of that topic. Now, okay, this rook b1. Is protecting the pawn so far unfortunately this rook is busy rook a7 is doing fine also the knight that pressures pawn b6 right so what we could improve is the king this bishop and this bishop so bishop f1 so far unfortunately doesn't have a good diagonals where I could place it so it could be bishop c3 or king g1 okay what could we do with the king Maybe to bring the king into the center. Okay, not on e3 because there will be knight d5 check. Maybe king f2, king f3. Okay, it's useful. But not something like, uh, wow, because of this I'm going to win the game in a few moves. And bishop c3 is left. So let's think about this bishop. What we could do. It is under the blocking structure. It just does nothing on this diagonal. And Kramnik realizes that this is the piece, actually, that could be improved seriously. And he plays bishop e1. Fantastic continuation. Bringing the bishop to the g3. And after f5, opening access to this diagonal. Actually finishing this game with this little maneuver of the bishop. Black played f5, stopping f4, f5 from white and bishop g3. Okay, and now Kramnik, I think uh, he played a little bit weak move. Simply knight e5 was the best continuation and it was enough to, to quickly win the game. Let's go for the next examples and finally we arrive to the end games. Well, uh, in the end games mainly corner pawn attack is connected with this uh, potentially passed pawn idea, creating of the potentially passed pawns or fixing the weaknesses on the flank. So this is the example about this topic and White immediately uses this advantage of these um, faraway pass pawns. He just plays e5. And there is a concrete threat I want to take here with the bishop. Uh, Black's position obviously is lost after this move. If it would be Black's turn to play maybe he could try e5 but it was white's turn to play. If, for example, knight e5 trying to close my bishop, maybe knight takes d6, bishop takes, pawn takes, king takes, and simply a5. One passed pawn that, that requires your attention and another hanging problem on this diagonal, it's too much, just, just too much for black. Uh, in the game, he played this check, 
Also, pawn takes e5 is possible, but after bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop g6, we already know what happens here. So that's why he decided to exchange this knight, and now bishop c3. Uh, black wants to block this diagonal and avoid any kind of bishop sacrifices. But okay, we can win another way. Just pawn takes d6. It is much stronger than the game, um, the move of the game. And simply b6 again. Black needs to wait here because uh, he can't play king c6 due to bishop takes g6, pawn takes g6, bishop takes c5. And if king c5 already, it's tough to block two passed pawns with the bishop. And if black just keeps waiting, we step by step will improve our position. For example, check and go back. Now this bishop is closed. After check, if he would play king c6, then bishop a4 check was winning the piece. So it's a domination of the pair of bishops. And now after just bishop b2, bishop b4, fixing this pawn, black is waiting. And again, this is the move that finishes uh, everything. Because now king goes to e4, blocking this pawn. And we are going to get the queen. Even after first look, it looks like knight f8 stops it, but simply bishop c5 check, and after king c5 check, b7, game is over. Let's see another example of this uh, famous game of this Muslov. Uh, obviously, white has a better position. Black has uh, control of the open file, but anyway, we see clearly that White's coordination of the pieces and development is is higher here, more important. And as you already understood, Smyslov played here, started the corner pawn attack, but of course not h4, h5. He plays a5, using the moment that if Black will take here after rook a1, everything will fall on this a file. And Smyslov wants to create at least um, entering open file for the for his own rook, or maybe he will play a6. That was actually played in the game, and we already know this. This is this time purpose is creating far away advanced pawn, and also fixing the weakness on a7. However, pawn takes b6 idea was also very good because let's say rook a1, pawn takes b6, entering with the rook there, and black will not survive in this position. Step by step, I'm, I'm winning this pawn. Uh, I'm playing something like rook c6 probably, uh, and coming close with the king. So that should be winning. Uh, well, anyway, Smyslov decided to go for a6. Black is waiting, and g4. I was thinking when I was preparing this material, maybe c knight c6 and c5 also could work. And when I checked it, yes, it also wins the game. Uh, uh, using the, the, the point of this, finally, our potentially passed pawn on a6. Uh, knight takes, rook takes, pawn takes, pawn b6, pawn a7, and black is forced to sacrifice the rook for this pawn, and this is enough to win the game. Uh, important is that black pawns are blocked, actually, with the knight. But Smyslov did not want to sacrifice here. He just went, uh, sorry, he just played g4. This is a well-known classical Soviet school. Soviet school. Um, on the queen side, White fixed his advantage and now he wants to push it and improve his position on another flank. Principle of two weaknesses. There is no rush, there is no hurry. So, king f6, check, knight c6, rook g2. Rook g2 prepares h4, h5, and this is why I like this example. Smyslow uses another corner pawn attack. Uh, this time I think it will be definitely for opening access 
and to enter with the rook there, not to play just h6. However, maybe it could be also possible. And before he will play this h4, he wants to make sure that knight doesn't enter on h5. Anyway, this, this would not be a serious problem. King f8, h4, king e8, and now Smisto plays rook h2, finally preparing h5. King f8. If black will play in knight g3, then Smisto forces this knight to go to this corner. And finally c5 is winning. We already saw this idea. Take, take, b6, take on b6, a7, and game is over. So, uh, black decide to play king f8, but Smyslov finally pushes this pawn. And gets success to this h6, and then potentially f6 square. Uh, if black ignores it and just plays king um, g6, Okay, could be played something like, uh, oops, sorry, king g6, could be played something like pawn takes, pawn, <laughs> could be played pawn takes, pawn takes, rook h6, and after knight e5, this pawn g6 is going to be lost. So, but now there are another huge problems. King g8, rook h1, uh, Knight rook d8 and now again back to the h6 to enter uh, on f6 after the knight c5. Uh, so uh, the game still continued I think for a few moves but it doesn't matter for us. White had a huge advantage here already, the game is decided. So once again we saw even, even twice we saw this corner pawn attack for various purposes here. Fixing the weakness, creating potentially passed pawn, and trying to get access to open file in order to activate our rook. And let's go to see the last example. Very good example, by the way. Let's take a look from the black side. Um, rook and one pawn for two minor pieces. At the first look, it's um, advantage of white in the material view. But the matter is that the knight is a little bit far away and it's black's turn to play. So if we could create some quick threats here using our pawn majority and the rook, maybe we will be doing just fine. But how to do this? First idea is maybe I have to create a far away past pawn fix the weakness and then somehow go to enter there. We already know this idea, but now after knight f4, unfortunately there, there is no entrance for the rook. And what white wants to do is to regroup his pieces and start pressuring the targets here. If c4, bishop takes c4, rook c8, okay, there's a little trick. The idea is to sacrifice here and then b3 and a2, we know this. But knight d5 and nothing is working here. Take b3, knight c3 and black is losing. So uh, what else we could do? Maybe we could take on b3, but uh, then just, uh, just bishop c4 and nothing happens. Uh, the last logical option looks like it's a rook h8. Okay, it's possible to win h2 pawn, but once again, white fixed the pawn structure. Bishop goes to c4, and I really doubt that black will survive here. And finally, we see the final, the perfect solution. Before playing a3, we don't lose a time and immediately start with this c4 sacrifice. The matter is that I want to create a passed pawn and if for example he will take it with the pawn after rook b8 supporting b3 white are immediately in the trouble. In the game he played bishop takes c4 but after rook c8 we already created this, this threat rook takes c4 then b3 pawn takes and a3. Of course we are going to play a3, not pawn takes b3, because we need, um, as more, as, as far away will be located our passer, outside passer, will be better for us. Now for example, if knight f4, this is just end of the game. So why decided to play here? Bishop d3, 
And what now? I think we know everybody what now. A3. Again, far away pass pawn and creating weakness. So now there are a lot of very unpleasant threats like rook c1, rook a1, taking the pawn or rook c3, uh, pinning the bishop first of all. And if bishop, for example, will leave this diagonal somehow, okay, it will be in the pin, but if he will, for example, if uh, white will play something like uh, king, uh, let's say, yeah, but it doesn't work. Yeah, okay, let, let's say black has two ideas to enter like this, and at some point to enter on b3, c3, and immediately be sacrificed for this pawn, because after pawn takes, there is a a2, a1 idea, right? So obviously, now white is in a huge trouble. And black were able to win this game, also with some mistakes, but he won the game. So, um, let's make a conclusion. Uh, the corner pawn attack is very, very famous and really very powerful idea with different purposes. It's uh, destroying the opponent's king defense, uh, opening the file for the rook, for example, when it was a h4, h5 attack in a dragon or on the pyrk, I wanted to open rook h1, right? Uh, also, it could be like I want to play uh, to push my pawn out in, until h6 square to create uh, control over the g7, g2, or somewhere those squares next to the opponent's king to create checkmating threats. Uh, also, it could be creating the potentially passed pawn, creating advanced pawn, and there are always these uh, sacrifice ideas here, somehow with the knight, with the rook, and a pawn goes to the queen. We saw these examples. And in the Smyslov game, we saw another final purpose, I think. It was just, just also together with the creating of the potentially passed pawn, just creating, fixing the weakness, because there was the knight which could enter on the square and permanently was attacking the pawn. So, use the corner pawn attack in your games. Generally, it's again the fianchetto structure. Sometimes, even the, without fianchetto, pushing the h4 can create the problems. But when you see the fianchetto of the opponent, immediately, mechanically, corner pawn attack should appear in your candidate possibilities. And, well, I hope you will win your games using these ideas. Thank you for attention. Hope you liked the video. See you next time. Bye bye.